Okay, so now we've been um, cooking this the, the base or the roux of the sauce for a while. Uh, has all, I have all the tomatoes in here, um, the garlic, the olive oil, the spices I started with. Now I'm going to start with adding the cans of sauce in there. I got four cans of sauce I'm putting in. One, two. I'm gonna put water in these cans and we'll go a halfway just to get the sauce off the sides. Okay, I'm gonna pour these in here. Do the same thing with these two cans. We found that could be like a little sauce can over there, just watching the sauce. Just keep it on there and watch the sauce boil. <laughs> Okay, put more water in there. That's good for now. I might add a little bit in there, a little more in there. But right now, it's pretty good. Okay, now after I've added the water, I'll add two tablespoons of sugar. One, two. Mix that in there really good. And we're gonna add in some wine. Not that much. One bay leaf in there. I have to get one that's not torn. It's got a tear in it. I get one that's solid. Okay, and we'll go ahead and mix that in. Okay, right now at this point I have the oven at around five. I'll leave it there for a while. <clears throat> I'm gonna add in a little bit more parsley. Add some more basil. Okay, and we'll stir that and we will let that simmer while we are browning the meats. Okay, that's good for now. I'll do that. Okay, so now we're starting on browning the meatballs. Right now I have the sauce in a pretty good shape over here. I wanted to get the sauce to this point where everything is in here that needs to be in here, just about. We'll be adding a few more spices as we go, herbs. Um, but this is what you want to have so the meatballs can go straight from the pan into the sauce, okay? So now, with this here, I'm gonna get too brown. That's the salt, that's the uh, salt pork. We've been browning that just to get the fat. So we'll take this out here. We're gonna keep all the grease in the pan. Try to get all these out because you don't want this stuff to burn as you're browning the meatballs. Mm -hmm. Get on there. As best as you can. Okay. All right, now we'll go ahead and we're going to put meatballs in there. You want this pan to be really hot. This is a non-stick stick pan that I pretty much ruined already from the high heat, but it's just dedicated for the meatballs, so I'm going to use it anyway. Okay. I do about half of the meatballs I've rolled out in one pan. So while we're doing this here, we're going to want to use two wooden spoons to roll this around. Don't let it sit in one spot too long. I'm going to keep rolling it around. I remember my grandmother making these meatballs when I was a kid at my grandparents' house. And my grandfather would watch Campbell Pin Bowling. That's where they had the little thin bowling pins. It was called Bowling for Dollars. I think that would have been probably late 70s. And I'd sit there and watch Bowling for Dollars with my grandfather while he could smell the meatballs being cooked in the kitchen by my grandmother. One of the memories I had when I cooked these. So what you want to do here, so my grandfather would also, on a TV tray, he would get a um, fresh block of Parmesan cheese, and while he's watching the, the uh, candle pin bowling, he would grate the uh, Parmesan cheese into a jar. It takes a while to grate that stuff, so he'd do it while he's watching cheese things. That was his job. He was the cheese grater. He always had fresh Parmesan cheese 
whenever we had a meal. And put it in a bowl with a spoon. And you just pour it on your food. Okay, so what you're doing here is you're really not cooking the meatballs, you're just searing them. So you can lock in the juices. And then get it right into the meat into the sauce. And what's good about this here is this is cooking in the salt pork grease. You're gonna take it right from the pan, put it in the sauce, and that grease is actually gonna get in the sauce. And we'll be pulling a lot of it out of the sauce later with a spoon, but that flavor is gonna get in the sauce. The pork flavor, which is real important. Okay, well that's brown in there. I'm gonna take these sausages that have already browned. We're gonna we're gonna add those to the sauce, not in the pan. <laughs> How long each one are you? <laughs> okay, it goes in there, we got all the sausages on there. Okay. That's that's getting it. This right here, you see this brown right there? It's almost like a crusty brown. That's what we're shooting for, like on all sides if you can do it. Sometimes you gotta take meatballs and kind of hold it like this. So it's a weird shape. You'll never get a perfectly round meatball. If you do, they weren't homemade. I can tell you that right now. Okay. And in here I'm gonna keep doing that. I'll let that sit for a minute and I'll stir. Get the sausages in there real nice. Looking good. Okay, I'm almost there. Now after I do these meatballs, I'll do these other six I have over here. And then we'll do the pork chops. Okay, almost there. Okay, now we're gonna put them in the in the sauce, like that. Okay, and I'll come back later. Okay, so now we have all the meats are in the sauce. As you can see here, we have the, the uh, meatballs, we have sausages, and we got pork chops that are browned in there. Very nice, okay, this is gonna simmer for a while. If it's too close, it's gonna fog up. Okay, uh, we'll let this simmer for uh, probably another two, three hours. So I'm gonna keep watching it as we go. I'm gonna slowly stir it. One thing when you have meat in here, don't just dive your fork in the center because you'll start breaking the meatballs up and the, and the, and the sausage. I'm gonna go down the side and then pour and spin around like that. Down the side and in, down the side and stir. So when you're gonna stir with meats, always go to the side first. That way you're not breaking anything up, okay? All right, now, at this point here, I will add just a little bit more parsley. Do a taste on this first here, real quick. Mmm. Mmm. This is like a soup. You could eat this in a bowl. I'm telling you, it's fantastic. Mmm. Okay. It needs a little bit more oregano. And it needs a little bit more basil. Add more pepper. And then we'll slowly stir that in because we have nice precious meat in there we don't want to break up. And then we will let that cook for a good long time, but we're gonna keep an eye on it. Now one thing I will come back and show you is that after this has been cooking for a while, a lot of grease is gonna rise to the top because after a while you're gonna to wanna to not stir it and let it sit and let it bubble a little bit because that's gonna let the grease come to the top and then we're gonna Cool off the grease. You say I've already taken a little bit off here already. But as it pools to the top, you're gonna to get the back of the spoon and pull out your grease. And I will come back when we're at that point. Okay. Okay, this has been cooking um, at three uh, on electric stove for about 20, 15 minutes. I've been stirring a little bit and I've been letting this, I just let this sit for about five minutes. And you can see in the top here, we have these little pools of grease. So I'm gonna get this spoon in here and pull this grease out. Go 
there's a, a little bit of grease we're going to pull it out. After we get it all pulled out, then we will slowly stir it again. A lot of it gets on the sides. Here we got to pull right here. You don't dig your spoon in, you just hold it right on the side like that and then the grease will go into the spoon. See that? Just like that. Perfect. There's some right there. And over here. And right there. Uh, more right here. Okay, and we'll let that cook some more and we'll get some more grease to the top. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stir this a little bit. Slowly. Again, going on the side so we don't break the meats up. And we'll just let that keep cooking. Okay, this is about um, probably 20 minutes after the last time I took grease out. Did a lot of stirring along the way, let it simmer some more. Right now you see it's at number two in, on the heat on the electric stove. And even being at two, that low, it's still boiling like you see here. See the boil? You want more bubbles than that right there. Okay, so now we, we got some grease here we want to get. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dig this out. Like this here. A lot of grease right there. And right here. We'll dig all that out and then we're going to let it cook some more. The longer you cook, the more this grease is going to come up and eventually it'll stop coming up. Same here. Okay, you can see we already got a, almost a cup of the grease here. We're probably going to have two cups of that when we're done. Okay, that's it for now. Okay, the sauce is now done. It's been, it's at 846, been cooking about two hours after the last segment of the video there. <clears throat> so the sauce has really been cooking about three and a half hours. And the meat's really in good shape. So what we're going to do now is we're going to taste it. And this is one of the benefits of cooking. You can you can do this little tasting thing before your guests arrive. I do that a lot. Okay, so we got meatball sausage. And I got some pork that's in here. Find a good piece. Ah, there's a good piece right there. All right. And then we're gonna put some sauce on there. Because if you're gonna taste it, you gotta taste it with the sauce. All right. Now, give me the fork. Okay, so a good sausage, you should be able to just cut it nicely, easy with a fork. Like that, a little tender. Mmm. Mmm. That's perfect. Okay. Meatball, you can be real soft and moist. You don't want a hard, dry meatball. Those are the worst. Nice and soft and moist. You know, like you're cutting through butter almost. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Same with the pork chop. Real easy to cut. Moist. Tundra. Mmm. You could drink this sauce. It's like a soup. Okay, so that's how you make a good sauce.